Dr. Sam Sr. went to Houston to receive treatment for his cancer. But when his condition deteriorated in August, Coach returned to Fort Myers to spend his last days. ABC 7's Donnie Brennan joins us right now from Fort Myers High School with more on not just a coaching legend, but a city treasure. That's right, Dave. A man who touched so many lives here passed away at 2.15 this afternoon. But before he passed away, he told his son Sam Jr., now the head coach of Fort Myers High, whatever happens to him, Coach Sam, do not let it affect Friday night. So he went out the way he lived his life, living it for everybody else. Now we take a look back. The legend actually started in 1959 when Sam Seriani became an assistant coach at Fort Myers High School. He then went home to West Virginia as an assistant for five more years. In 1969, the legend took hold when Coach Sam, as he became affectionately known, was named the head coach of the Green Wave football team. I guess it'd be similar if you're a college player going to play for Bobby Bowden. You know, you, you, uh, you, you know of the, of the reputation, you know that the, the, the possibilities of, of going on to bigger and better things are there. Um, he, he's a legend. The reason this program's been so good is because of the consistency inside of it. Sam's built that. Sam's legacy will be that it will continue. Coach Sam proceeded to coach 33 years, compiling a record of 243 wins against 103 losses. His teams won 10 district titles and 15 Lee County Athletic Conference championships. Sam Sirianni's an icon. He really is. He's a legend and right here in Southwest Florida. And he's a guy that, you know, on the East Coast, we know who Sam Sirianni is. Uh, he's just been great for football uh, in the state of Florida and, and, and has kids all over the nation that, are, that have played for him, that are, you know, successful human beings, uh, largely in part for the investment he made in them. In January of 2000, Coach Sam was diagnosed with cancer, yet he kept quiet about it and continued to coach without ever missing a game. I've had the opportunity, and, and really that opportunity was given to me because of Coach Sam. I mean, you know, he fought for a scholarship for me and fought uh, for my academics and helped me as a, as a youngster. But in the fall of 2001, his condition worsened, and for the first time since he started coaching, Coach Sam was not on the sidelines for a Green Wave football game. Not having him was kind of different in practice, you know, him running around the golf cart telling jokes, but it's, it's, it's going to be hard, but, you know. We're going to win this year for him. This past August, we were to find out that a long and storied career was over. Coach Seriani was hanging up his spikes. He would not coach again. Everybody looked at that paper this morning, their stomach and their heart kind of sunk, knowing that Sam is officially leaving, um, hoping in their hearts that the tradition continues here. Around here, we just need to be able to... Uh be able to continue to do things in the manner in which he did them because he did them at a high level and did them first class. The field here at Fort Myers High School has been renamed. It's now Sam Seriani Field at Edison Stadium. That's because this is where Coach Sam had his biggest impact. He became a coach, a father figure, a friend, and a mentor to thousands of athletes and students. I can relate to him as a friend more than just a coach. You know, he's helped me out in a lot of situations. Talk to me on my own, off the field, off the record, not having anything to do with football, just about being a person and things I can do to help better myself. He's been a mentor, he's been a second father to me, and he's been a, a man that, that uh, I've tried to model my, my life after. Coach Sam was born on October 29, 1937 in southern West Virginia, and who could have known at that time what a profound impact he would have on a small town in southwest Florida. He will be sorely missed. When Coach Sam's time comes, that uh, the Lord's going to have a, another angel up there. Don Brennan, ABC 7 Sports. Dave, as of right now, there will be a moment of silence prior to the game tonight. There will be no viewing hours, and the funeral will be private, but the school and the family are planning a big memorial at the high school next Tuesday or Wednesday. They're not sure, but probably next week sometime, mid-next week. Coach Sam Jr. will coach the game tonight, along with big Coach Sam's brother, uh, who has been along with the co uh, who's been on the sidelines for so many years. Both of them will coach tonight, but then go right after the game to be back with the family. Once again, sadly, a sad day in Fort Myers High. Coach Sam Seriani dead at 64 at Fort Myers High. I'm Don Brennan, ABC 7 Sports. ABC 7's Don Brennan has been at Fort Myers High School since late this afternoon when the first fans showed up for tonight's game with Mariner, which Coach Sam insisted should be played. But Donnie, the mood must have been a little surreal. Oh, uh, Dave, it was very somber indeed. Many ex-players and fans alike and everybody we talked to, Dave, 
almost coming to tears, uh, or many coming to tears, when talking about Coach Sam. And we got to talk to many people tonight, and here's a look. I'm sorry I have to ask you. Thank you. Most, most of us parents have known him since our kids were in Little League. It goes back really a long time. I'm sorry. That was the reaction of many of the people we spoke with today when they heard the news that Coach Sam, Sam Seriani, had passed away. Coach Sam felt the game should go on, but fans and friends didn't have to be happy about it. As far as ever knowing anybody like that, no. I didn't know anybody like that when I was going through school. It was, uh, there were coaches that you remember, but nobody that uh, sticks with you like Coach Sam did. His son Sammy is the head coach and he had to coach this game just hours after losing his father and he wanted to be left to himself, understandably. It was absolutely the toughest thing I know he's ever had to do but his dad told him three weeks ago no matter what happens we don't we don't interfere with a football game. It was hard also for the players but they felt a win would be a tribute to the man who they called Coach Sam. You know, it was real tough, you know, uh, at halftime, you know, we were real, everyone was just real quiet, you know, saying the prayers, and um, we just knew we had to come out and do what we had to do, and we did that, and I'm just glad we were able to do it. It was real sad, and they told us, you know, we still had to play, and he wanted us to play, and that was his last word, so make sure it doesn't erupt us, and make sure we play good, and, you know, it was, it was real tough. How, how tough did they were? Dave, many... Unfortunately, Coach Sam passed away, and he didn't pass away until 2.15 this afternoon. They did not tell the student body, so a lot of people showing up here tonight at the game, this was the first time they were hearing about it. So I talked to Principal Browder, and he felt tonight would not be the worst night. Monday would be the worst day to have to deal with Coach Sam's death. In Fort Myers High, I'm Don Brennan, ABC7 Sports. And Don Brennan joins us from Charlotte High School, where emotions are high. But, Donnie, how much emotion do the Green Wave have left? Dave, I don't know. That's a good call. We're going to ask Binky Waldrop, the head coach of Charlotte, that in a second. Three weeks in a row. They had the big game against Naples. Then last Friday, unfortunately, hours after Coach Sam Sirianni's death, they had to play. And now another big game, two of the top teams in the state. Joining me right now, Binky Waldrop, the head coach of the Charlotte Tarpon football team. Binky, how tough is it a team for three weeks in a row to have an emotional high like this? Well, it's, it's got to be tough on them. Uh, you know, I'm sure emotionally they'll, they'll come out pretty high tonight and you know as the game goes on you know things will will settle down a little bit what about the fact last year they beat you 14 to 3 but it was a game of maybe two star wide receivers one on your behalf and one on their behalf uh, will things be different this year now that you don't have those two star wide receivers uh, yeah you can see both teams run the ball a little more this year uh, it should be another another great matchup between the two teams though and what about the crowd? You're playing at home this year. That's a big difference here at the Fishbowl. Oh, we should have a, a big crowd. Our fans are great, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll all get out here tonight and, and support us. Excellent. Thanks a lot, and good luck, Binky. Thanks. Thanks for taking the time. Dave, four years in a row, Fort Myers has prevailed. The last time that Charlotte lost here at the Fishbowl, two years ago, to you got it, Fort Myers. Here at Charlotte High, I'm Don Brennan for ABC7 Sports. ABC7's Donnie Brennan joins us tonight from Donnie, where are you? Well, Dave, I'm at the Tarpon Champ Cafe. That's actually the school cafeteria. And the fans, the players are getting their groove on for good reason tonight. <laughs> All right, Dave, we're going to go to the highlights right now. We'll show you why they are so happy right now. Earlier tonight, there they are defending their home turf. The Tarpons are coming out ready to go early on. Big hit right here by Ryan Bosch, just waylays. Ryan Grilinski, and then Justin Midget. Zip, zip in the second. He's going to drop back and hit Voss for a long gain. That's going to set up a field goal, 3 nothing Tarpons. And then Jarris Boyd of Fort Myers is going to break it in from two yards out. 7-3 with under a minute to go in the first half. And this was the key drive of the game right here. The Tarpons and Midget, 80 yards to go in less than a minute. 65 yards to Voss to the eight-yard line. And it's now he drops back and he finds Voss again. These guys teamed up for that touchdown going into the halftime is 9-7. And then the... And then the coup de grace right here, Alvaro Bada, 20-yard touchdown, breaks it out, makes it 22-7. The final score was 22-7, Charlotte, and Voss had 100, 198 yards receiving, and Justin Midget, 265 yards passing. So I'm thinking about Sammy and his family, it's, it's tough. 
but uh, you know I'm proud of our kids. They played hard, 